Hi guys, it's Master Coach Tony Morgan, and today's video is on the Weisman Vitrodens 50. So we've got a bit of a story to tell you before we get involved with the video. So what's happened, yesterday I was here and the customer said they had an F1 code, so I come out and checked out. So F1 means the flu sensors are overheated or going to either well, going to high temperature. So that was due to this design of the boiler. And this boiler, because the flu sensor had been activated, that was activated from the heat of the main heat exchanger and not the flu gases. So on this design of the boiler, that's what you're going to get. So what actually happened is that the pump had failed. It wasn't turning. There was power on the pump, which you tested. So that needed replacing. And also, I'd done a further check to check on the hoses on the floor and turn. And I found that they were partially blocked as well. So we've come back today to do the job of changing the pump. I've got my son with me today, which you're going to see. He's going to be involved in this video. And what's happened now is that the pump started to turn. The F1 fault didn't appear, but now we've got an F2 fault. So this is the code what we got today, as I said. I'm going to bring Miles in now. Miles, you just lift that front cover off of me, please. So I just said Miles going to be assisting me with this video. And obviously Miles' journey in him becoming a masterful engineer. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use um, a wet vac and going to suck out, basically, I'm going to take that tube clip off and suck that through there. Or I might just take the whole thing off and do that, it's quite easy. But on the return, it's a lot more difficult because you can take it off here, but the other side goes at the back of the main heat exchanger, which is going to be impossible to get to unless you take the whole main heat exchanger out, which I don't really want to do. So I'm going to use the wet pack, suck that up that pipe hose and clear any debris on that return hose. The other thing what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to check that filter there to see if it's clear because if it isn't, then obviously debris would have got into the bar, which it has anyway. So as I said, we're going to check that filter up there. Just turn the power off. I'm going to isolate the flow return here. Oh, actually, that's a bit weird. When I closed it off, like that across the pipe, it actually opened it. Because now, pressure has gone in the boiler. So then valves run the wrong way. So I'm just going to reset it again. So you can hear all that. You can hear that debris, the stump, something definitely going around the boiler. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put it in engineer mode. Actually, I'll do that again. So you can clearly hear that pump is not good. So it's got pressure in it now. So it's gone off. The has gone way up. And F2's come on. So that's the situation. Now on this boiler, there's no drain point on this particular one. On these 50s, this is the base model of the Weizmann's. 
So um, there's not a good drain point. So the only way I'm going to have to drain it is through the PRV, which a lot of people say no. But anyway, it's happening. So the PRV is kind of disguised. There it is where my finger is. It's all in black, so you can't see it. So. Wind in there. Pressure's going down. It's making all noises because it was very hot inside the boiler. I'm just trying to keep it cranked open. It's really difficult just to get it at that point where it just stays open. It's very delicate. Nope. So, because when you turn it, it flicks back round. No, it's not happening. It? So, anyway, we've got most of the water out. Hi, Miles. And um, now we're going to be changing the pump. But because we're working on the primary side of the boiler, I'm going to connect my foot pump to the expansion vessel to get rid of any remains of primary water from the system. So after connecting the foot pump to the trader valve with the expansion vessel, water has came out, which means the expansion vessel is knackered because the diaphragm split inside it. This is a filter. Um, I took out my outside now. So you can see it's not that badly blocked. You can see that the side is pretty clear. There's a bit at the top there. But other than that, the bottom below it is also clear. So this is not caused that blockage inside the boiler. So the filter is not very good. Or I think the boiler on these Weissmans are very prone for getting blocked up, despite the filters fitted on the system. What I've done now, put the filter back in position and coming down to the boiler. I've loosened that Jubilee clip off and we're going to get the wet back now and we're going to pull this hose off and use the wet back at the same time to suck up any water what might come out and then we're going to then suck up this hose. What I'm going to do now is this is my wet back ready so we're going to pull the hose off and then, well, not pull it off entirely, just a bit, and then we'll suck out whatever water's going to come out through the hose. So, basically, I'm sucking right through the main heat exchanger. And this is hot, got hot water, so it's coming straight out the main heat exchanger. You can do here with that. I felt the top of the hose and I could feel a bit of resistance here, so we decided to take the pipe off completely. What I just did, I basically pulled this tube um, jubilee clip off, undone that, pulled this hose off, and basically sucked up the return pipe. And also, there was debris coming off the top of the pump, big chunk of debris came out through sucking it through the hoover, so it was quite successful doing that so we're just going to change the pump head and then we'll fill up and test it all. So just to bring up to speed what's happened now basically I was going to change the pump but I'm not going to change the pump because um, the pump what he had wouldn't fit. I was going to use um, a Worcester one because I couldn't get the one what I wanted for today. I thought it might fit, but the Worcester one won't fit because, though it's the same pump, the connections are on the other side, so basically this bit would have been facing here, and that means you couldn't get access to the electric, so it won't work. Also, I took the pump out, sucked out the back of it here. There's loads of debris at the back of this pump. Freed it off up inside here, cleaned out there, 
salt flip should work as new. So it's just a case of filling it up now. Just um, an end up on these valves actually, but basically what it was, it wasn't what I said. It was, it was just spinning. And so basically I went to fill it back up again and had the same problem, so I looked at it more closely. So we have to take basically the levers off and then use adjustables to actually do the job. So now we put the heating on. You see the temperature's dropped right down. The diverter valves let the return mark come in. So the radiators, radiators are getting hot. I just checked a few, so it's definitely circulating on the heating. So what I'm going to suggest, let the customer, I'm going to tell the customer to let the heating run for maybe a couple of hours, and it might push around any trap debris on the um, primary circuit. So if that's the case, that'll do it. Just testing the hot water again, see if there's any improvement on that. No, we are getting a partial blockage. Looks like more on the plate heat exchanger rather than the main heat exchanger. So the end conclusion is that as I said, the plate exchange has got a partial blockage. The main heat exchanger, I think it's working a lot better than I thought. And um, we're going to leave that back. So it's going to need a new plate, new expansion vessel because that was leaking from the shader valve earlier. But the pump's going around fine. So that's where we're going to leave it. So that's going to be in this video. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.